Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Neenit. My name is Amy and we talk about all things knitting here on my YouTube channel. And I'm so glad you're joining me for another podcast update on what I'm working on. So I know I just posted a podcast just two weeks ago and I've been doing my podcast monthly, but I was thinking that I might wanna start doing them a little bit more frequently just to keep you guys more in the loop and show you guys maybe more smaller increments of progress on my projects. I don't really hold myself to a specific recording schedule. I kind of do these for fun. And as I was thinking about what I've been working on, I just felt like I had a lot to share. So I wanted to sit back down and film another podcast for you guys. So I think for the future there will definitely be you know at least one podcast per month but every now and then I might throw in an extra one so we have today a standard format of finished objects what I'm working on progress on my whips and new things I might have gotten for knitting or more specifically like project plans or future plans for what's upcoming so thank you guys for joining in you might notice I did get a haircut, little chop. It was getting a little long there, so a nice freshen cut. And yeah, I'm wearing my Friday Slipover V-neck by Petite Knit. I knit this uh, last year in Santa's Garden Sunday in the color light beige held together with Plymouth Surrey Stratus in the color taupe. So yeah, that's my little knit outfit for the day. <laughs> All right, so last time I spoke with you guys, I mentioned that I would be knitting a baby sweater for a gift. I was going to a baby shower that I went to last weekend for a family member, and that was a whole lot of fun. So I decided to knit the baby Aosta sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. She had the Aosta sweater pattern for a while, and then just recently she released a baby version. It is so cute. And I knit that up in Sorella Classic DK, which is a superwash merino wool in the color Townhouse. Oh, no, that's incorrect. In the color Nolita, which was from the Autumn in New York collection. Is it Nolita? Oh my gosh, I can't remember what color it is. Okay, either way, it's this beautiful pink sort of mauve tonal color from the Autumn in New York collection. I may, you know, put little text box over here with the correct color name just so you guys know. Um, but in my last video, I was talking about how I wasn't really sure what size to make. I only had one skein of the yarn, which was 100 grams. So that only gave me the opportunity to make either the newborn or the three month size. And I was leaning towards the three month size just so I could sort of use up all the yarn and not have like a weird tiny amount left over to have and a lot of you guys commented recommending the three months because babies and newborns grow so quickly so thank you guys for all the suggestions I did ended up making the three month size and we'll talk a little bit about how that ended up. So I don't have the finished object with me. Like I said before, the baby shower was last weekend, so that sweater was finished, blocked, gifted, all in between filming. So I did take some pictures and film a little video b-roll of the finished sweater which i'll overlay and it's just this beautiful crew neck sweater it uses the andalusian stitch which has alternating knits and pearls to create this beautiful all over texture i think that the tonal yarn really helped the texture pop and it's just so cute it's just so small and it's a raglan construction the beginning is knit flat so you can create that little button band near the neckline it just makes it easier to put on and take off of the baby and yeah you'll notice that the button band is on the opposite side compared to all of the pattern images that's just because i knit left-handed and everything is sort of mirrored and when you have mirrored things that are asymmetrical it's going to end up on the other side Depending on the pattern, you know, left-handers might choose to adapt the pattern so it does look exactly like the right-handed finished project from the pattern page, but for me in this sweater, I just knit it as it was written, which ended up in a mirrored image button band, as you can see. All right, the air conditioning in the apartment just came on, so I'm hoping that'll turn off in a minute. I just went to shut it off. So if you hear some ambient noise, hopefully that'll go away shortly. Um, so with this Baby Osta sweater, I had quite the game of yarn chicken that I ended up losing. So this sweater ended up being more of a big deal project. It wasn't as quick as I thought it would be because I ran out of yarn in order to make the dimensions that were called for in the pattern. So it's a raglan. So I worked it top down and I ended up doing the body before the sleeves just because it was such a small 
project. I didn't want to cut the yarn to do the sleeves before the body, which I will normally do with, you know, my sweaters and adult size sweaters, just because I want to make sure I finish the sleeves before I go on to the body so I don't run out of yarn. Well, that came back to bite me. So I did have the correct amount of yarn according to the pattern. Like, although I didn't use the suggested yarn, the yarn that I had was the exact same yardage and weight. So I just knit the body to the suggested length, which was nine and a half inches long for the three month size. And then I went on to do the sleeves. And when I was doing the second sleeve, I was only about a quarter of the way through and I ran out of yarn and I knew this was happening. You know, I had finished the body and I went on to the sleeves and I saw how much yarn I had left. And I was like, I really don't think this is enough for the sleeves. So I had to undo my cast off for the body and then I took that yarn and used it to knit the sleeve without cutting any of the yarn. So I kind of just knitted the sleeve from the body. It was kind of funny. Just And then I finished the sleeve and then cut the yarn and then finished the body with whatever I had left. So I think my body length on the sweater ended up being about one and a half inches shorter than suggested, which... I feel like is a lot for the proportion of the baby sweater. So I don't actually know what size the finished sweater is, like the sleeve length was the three month long sleeve length, but the body length is definitely shorter. I'm just hoping they'll, <laughs> the recipient of the sweater will, you know, just use the sweater whenever it fits the baby. I know babies grow at such different rates, so you can't really assign like a timeline to the clothes. It's just, you know, whenever they fit, they fit. So that was gifted off. I think it was well received. It was a lot of fun to knit. It was super cute. And the yarn was really nice to work with. It was super soft and it's super washed. So I'm hoping that is helpful to, you know, the parents of the baby and making sure that that sweater is easy care. So that was my only finished object from the past couple weeks. Obviously it's only been a couple weeks, so I would be surprised if I finished anything more than that, but I did make significant progress on my Moby sweater. So I will grab that to show you guys. Ta-da! All right, so last I showed you guys this sweater, I had the top collar and maybe like a little bit of the body done but now i finished the body i finished the first sleeve you can see i started the second sleeve so this has been moving along just swimmingly so i finished the body it went pretty quickly i did make it a little bit shorter than the suggested length just because i myself am short so my torso is not as long as um what i think standard measurements would call for for my size. I'm only five feet tall. I don't think I've mentioned that on the show or podcast before, but I'm pretty short, so five foot zero. So my torso lengths are usually a little bit shorter than average, um, but I did do the full length of the ribbing. So pretty long ribbing on this sweater. This is three and a half inches before you do the double knitting and tubular cast off. I think it adds to the polished look. I feel like it might look pretty abrupt if it had shorter ribbing. So I really like that design element. Just a reminder of the yarn that I'm using in case this is the first time you're tuning in. I am using the suggested yarn for the pattern. This is the Moby sweater by Petite Knit and it calls for double Sunday held with tin silk mohair, both from Sandis Garn. So I am using Double Sunday in the color white and the tin silk mohair in the color natural held together. And you get this beautiful creamy white cabled sweater. So once I finished the body, I went onto the sleeves. Now this is a drop shoulder construction sweater. So the sleeves have to be picked up from the armholes that I made earlier in the pattern. And I don't like picking up stitches that much. I don't like picking up stitches specifically from rows because it's like hard to see where to pick up the stitches. It's not as clean as when you're picking up stitches like in line with the stitches, if that makes sense. You know, vertical picking up versus horizontal picking up. And I always get the proportion of picking up stitches incorrect on the first tries. So I'm always ripping back my picked up stitches on my first attempts just to get the correct number of stitches for the sleeve. So that happened with this one. I think I ripped out my picked up stitches two times and I didn't get it correct until the third time because with this, because it's a charted pattern on the sleeve, you do have to get the exact amount of stitches picked up 
And then you also have to take care that your like midpoint of the stitches is exactly at the top of the shoulder because you have this cable line that runs down the length of the sleeve. And I think if the, the cable pattern sits right in the middle of the picked up stitches and I, I think if you didn't make sure your midpoint was right at the top of the shoulder, it might look a little wonky. So there's a lot of stuff to keep in mind while picking up the stitches. There were not a lot of pattern notes on it. Petite Knit suggested a three stitch pickup for every four rows on the sleeve for my sweater size and that was just very off for me. And I don't know why, because my gauge was pretty similar. So I would think that I would have, you know, a similar amount to pick up, but I ended up needing to do two for every three instead of three for every four to get the right stitch count. So that's just one note that I noticed with picking up the stitches and how the pattern was written. And like I said before, it wasn't very clear to, to pay attention to the midpoint, um, but I kind of just new to do that because I knew what was coming with the charts. But if you're still pretty, you know, new to knitting and working on kind of like knitting intuition, that might not be very clear and you wouldn't want the cable line to be super off center. So besides that, once I picked up the correct amount of stitches, the sleeve was pretty smooth sailing. Um, it is a tapered sleeve, so there is some decreasing that you have to count along with following the chart pattern. So I did have to use my row counter with this and just some mental remembering like, oh, every X amount of rows I have to decrease. In addition to every X amount of rows, I have to do the cable pattern. So a little bit of a, you know, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing sort of thing. So the sleeve length here is another thing with this pattern. I think, I don't know, the sleeves maybe just felt like an afterthought compared to the thoroughness of how the rest of the pattern was written, but the pattern said to knit the sleeve before the ribbing. So to knit up to this point for 17 and a quarter inches. Now that's a really long sleeve in my like experience. So I thought this was a little long. I then held up, you know, a measuring tape to my arm just to see how that would stack up. And then in addition to that, I pulled out my Oslo sweater, which is also a pattern by Petite Knit. It's also a drop shoulder pattern. And I measured my sleeve length on that just cause I was curious. And my total sleeve length on my Oslo sweater was about 17 inches. Now in this pattern, she wanted you to knit the cable pattern for 17 inches. And then remember on top of that, you have the cuff, which is called for four inches. So that just seemed way too long. And I knew that was gonna be way too long for me. So I only knit this cable pattern on the sleeve for about 14 inches. And then I did the four inch cuff. So now my sleeve length is about 18 inches long. I tried it on, it's the perfect length. You know, it goes a little bit past my wrist here, which is what I wanted. So I don't know if other people experienced that with the pattern. I don't know if she just wanted the sleeves to be really long. I don't know, it was a little odd to me. Um, with things like length, it's just important to try it on, measure it against your own body. Don't just blindly follow the length instructions because everyone's proportions are a little bit different. I did do double knitting and tubular cast off at the sleeve cuff. I think it looks really clean. One of my favorite parts of sweaters is just tubular cast off. Can't have anything better. I also did it on the body here. I'll try and show that up close. I think it looks good. So I did try this sweater on and I will say it's a bit tight, like in terms of positive ease versus zero ease. So I'll overlay a little video of me with it on right now. This is pre-blocking and the pattern says that the finished sweater should have about six to eight inches of positive ease. And as you can see in the video of me trying it on, it probably has only about, I don't know, two inches of positive ease. It's definitely more like form fitting. So I am really hoping that it stretches and grows with blocking because I really want this to be sort of like a cozy throw on oversized sweater, kind of the way it looks on petite knit. You can see it has a lot of flow and ease. And right now this is very stiff. It's pretty like form fitting on my body. And I think that is just due to the fact that it's a cabled sweater and cables do, you know, sit very tight until you block it out. Like you can see right here on the cable line on the body, it's pretty compressed and with blocking, it should open up. And I think overall when everything stretches out, 
I'll get that six to eight inches of positive ease, I'm hoping. My gauge swatch was blocked and matched the suggested gauge of the pattern. So I have all my faith in that. And so it's also sort of pushing me to finish the sweater because I really want to, I really want to see how it blocks out and I'm fingers crossed that it really grows to become that oversized, cozy, squishy knit. I have been going through this sweater pretty quickly. It's been really fun. I would say that in the past couple weeks, I've kind of been monogamously knitting on it, which I don't normally do. You guys know I usually have a lot of projects going on at the same time. So it's been fun to sort of just focus on one piece and it's been really fun to see it grow really quickly. I think that's something that maybe I'll pay attention to in the future. Like, I don't know, I want to be a monogamous knitter, but I know that I'm not. And I did say before that I like having different types of projects going on at the same time so I can choose what style of knitting I wanna work on at any given point in time. So yeah, I don't know, just something I'm thinking about for the future, cause it is really satisfying. Like I only started this last month and now I'm almost done. and you know, when I'm knitting multiple sweaters at the same time, they take longer to finish. So we'll see. Something else that happened within the last two weeks that's sort of related to the monogamous knitting is those new wooden needles I showed you last week. I had a pair on my Monday sweater, the navy blue one. Just to refresh your guys' memory on the sweater, here it is. Navy blue Monday sweater in San Escar and Sunday in marine blue and tin silk mohair also in marine blue or deep marine, I think is the name of the tin silk mohair. Um, but I had gotten new Knitter's Pride Dreams needles a couple weeks ago because I needed another set of four millimeters and so I ordered these new ones. But unfortunately, I already broke <laughs> one of the needle tips. You can see I don't have it anymore. So until I get a replacement set of needle tips, it was forcing me to work on the Moby sweater because I couldn't make any progress on the Monday sweater. So that was sort of a good and bad thing. <laughs> but yeah, other than the few rows that I did or rounds that I got on the Monday sweater in the past few weeks, not a whole lot of progress here. I am getting pretty close to separating for the sleeves, which will be exciting. I am looking forward to just having this nice stockinette piece to work on. And I'm hoping that this sweater turns out nice because I kind of want this Monday sweater pattern that I have to sort of be like a go-to raglan sweater pattern. I definitely am more attracted to raglans in terms of knitting them. I enjoy them more than drop shoulder sweaters and wearing them. I think they're just a little bit more flattering on me than drop shoulders. So I would love to be able to make this Monday sweater at any point in time with other yarns, just because it's such like a vanilla style pattern. I think it would be really nice in some hand dyed yarns, some non mohairs. Maybe if I ever feel like gifting a sweater to someone, it could be a good go-to pattern. So looking forward to making more progress on this when my needles come in. All right, I did start a new project as well, and that is the Bothy Hat by Isolde Teague. So the Bothy Hat is a two by two ribbed beanie pattern, and I am making this for my husband. He doesn't know I'm making this for him. He's also in the next room. I am unsure if he's listening or not. If he is, there goes the surprise, but <laughs> Anyways, so he picked out this yarn when we were in Sweden together last year. This is the Filkalana Arweta Classic in the color Red Squirrel, this beautiful rust color. So the Bothy hat I chose because he wanted a beanie that was more form-fitting to the top of his head. He does currently wear his Oslo hat that I made him a while ago. The Oslo hat is also in Filkalana Arweta Classic and he loves that hat, but he wanted something that was more form-fitting. The Oslo hat sort of has like a tiny bit of poof at the top. So I found this pattern on Ravelry and I really liked the crown decreases. I'll put a picture up to show you guys. I think it's called like a cable decrease, but you can see it's a little bit like artistic compared to the classic like knit two together or SSK decreases that a lot of two by two ribbed hats use. So I thought that would be fun. 
the hat pattern comes in a whole range of sizes, I think baby through adult. So pretty versatile pattern that I definitely can make again in the future as sort of a go-to hat design. So it is a DK weight pattern. So the Felkalana Arweta is a fingering weight yarn. So I'm holding it double. I did not gauge swatch just because, I don't know. I didn't feel like gauge swatching for hats. I just felt like the time it would take for me to start knitting it and see how it fits and then maybe needing to undo it is like the same amount of time it would have taken to make a gauge swatch, measure it, wash it, and all that. So I didn't gauge swatch. I cast it on for the adult size large through XL. It's like a range of sizes. So it's one size, but it's supposed to fit adults large through XL in terms of head circumference. And it was way too big. Like I could tell when it was on my needles that there were way too many stitches on the needles to be like, a good form-fitting hat. And it is also hard to tell because with the ribbing, it compresses. So like this is compressed, but when it stretches, it's gonna get a lot bigger. And it was huge. So I ended up frogging it. I knit about maybe like an inch and a half, and then I frogged it, cast it on the size below it, which is adult, small through medium, I believe. And I can tell that this is gonna fit so much better. So. I did do two by two tubular cast on, which was a new thing for me, very exciting. Let me just show you guys up close how it turned out. So I don't do tubular cast ons very often um, because most of the sweaters I make are top down, but I really wanted a clean edge for this one. The tubular cast on for the pattern is optional, but I was like, let's give it a go. I've done tubular cast on for one by one before. Definitely sometimes takes a few tries, but you know, I'm getting better at it. So I followed Andrea Mowry's video tutorial, which is super helpful. And two by two tubular cast on starts the same exact way as one by one tubular cast on. So you kind of do the sort of wrap. I did the long tail tubular cast on. So in the same way that you sort of do the alternating knit and purl stitches, you cast on that amount of stitches in the knit and purl alternating, excuse me. And then you do the two setup rows in alternating one by one rib. But then when you go to connect in the round, you sort of shuffle the stitches as you get to them. So they are two knits and two purls alternating which if you've never done it before, sounds pretty scary, sounds pretty complicated, but I just did it slowly following the video tutorial. It does include, like you have to pop off a stitch and just let it free float while you knit a stitch and then you put the floating one back on the needle to sort of rearrange the order. And it was so much easier than I thought it was gonna be. I think the way the tubular stitches hold, like it wasn't eager to unravel when you pop the stitch off and Overall, I would just say I had a very positive experience with it. I do really like the finished look. It's kind of interesting. You can sort of see it does have the same sort of wraparound style that the one by one has. Oops, my needle's popping through. Um, anyways, yeah. So overall, learn a new skill. I did have to do it twice, but that's fine. <laughs> I tend to lose count with tubular cast on because I find it really difficult to count the stitches once they're on the needle. So I have to be really intentional as I'm actually making the stitches to count out loud, slow and steadily, so I don't accidentally count incorrectly. And then because I can't go back and recount them once they're on the needle, yeah, I just have to be very slow and deliberate with counting as I cast them on. So slow process there, but very worth it in the end. So. I'll show you guys this hat when it's done. I'm hoping it'll be pretty quick. It is just a single fold brim. It's not like a double folded brim. So should be pretty quick in terms of finishing, not use that much yarn. And I hope my husband enjoys it. Okay, so the next project that I have ongoing that I started recently is a crochet project. You guys haven't seen it yet here on my channel, but I started the Lakeside Mist Cardigan by Janine Miska from Knits and Knots. So you guys might have seen, I got this book for Christmas and was super excited to try out some of the patterns. This is Modern Crochet Sweaters. It is a book that has 20 different sweater patterns that I think are really cute. And I don't crochet a ton, but I wanted to sort of get into it a little bit more. So let me pull up the pattern and show you guys what it looks like. 
It's at the beginning of the book. Here it is. So it is a long line cardigan. I don't really know the name of the stitch pattern, but I think it has some nice texture. You can see the ribbed cuff and the ribbing sort of band. And I think it'll just be a really cozy piece to throw on over whatever I'm wearing in the fall and the winter. Um, yeah, so I am using, let me show you the actual project. This is what we got so far. <laughs> it's in the noodle phase, but I am using, there goes my hook. Lion Brand Feels Like Butter in the color Cocoa. And yes, it feels like butter. That's not me with a Boston accent. That's actually the name of the yarn. I don't have a Boston accent that's strong. Sometimes I wish I did, but I don't. <laughs> Even though i um, born and raised here in Massachusetts. But this is the status of the cardigan. It is a really long piece of fabric. The construction right now, basically the part that I'm making, it's knit and panels that are seamed together. So I'm making sort of like the front left panel and then the front right panel is made the same exact way. But right now I'm doing like this. So this will get wider until like it'll stop here in the middle and then the sl it'll get connected like underneath and then the sleeve will get attached. So you can see here like the bottom ribbing sort of is at the bottom of the cardigan, if that makes sense. I used a foundation single crochet, which took a while because there are several hundred chain stitches to start off this piece. So it's pretty slow moving. Um, you can see my tension in the foundation row was a lot looser than the actual like stitches. Um, that's why I got a little bit of curling here. I'm hoping that it'll block out, um, but the stitch pattern is really nice. I don't know if it has a name. Let me just show you guys up close. It's nice and textured. It's kind of just like single crochet and chains sort of alternating. Yeah, you can tell my technical knowledge on crochet is not nearly up to par with my technical knowledge of knitting, which is why I don't really have too much to say about this. It is pretty slow moving, but I am trying to do like one row a day just to see some progress on it. Sort of casual on the side. I don't really have a deadline in my own head for when I'll finish this, but just something to satisfy my crochet itch. <laughs> All right, now we'll get into some acquisitions and future plans. You'll see, or you probably have been looking at what's in the background of my video. So very excited to share what my next project is. So I signed up for an Icelandic sweater class at my local yarn shop, which is totally new to me. I've never taken a knitting class and I am on the newsletter for a bunch of my local yarn shops and one of them sent out in their newsletter last month that they're starting a class and it's like a three session class and we're going to knit through the pattern called Oop. But I might be pronouncing it wrong, but this is a pattern from the Istex magazine and you can see here it is a beautiful Icelandic wool cardigan with some color work and it is knit in alpha al alafoslopi. Again, probably pronounced that wrong, so apologies there. But this is Istex's bulky weight Icelandic lopi wool. Let's just show up close the different colors. So I'll just go through each one. I don't know the color names, but they're all sort of heathery. This is like a gray. So my plan, I'll keep the photo up here of the color work cardigan. So my plan is for, actually we'll start with this, <laughs> sorry. So my plan is the body will be this blue, very nice sort of navy denim blue. And I'm gonna keep like the white in the pattern picture the same, like I have this white here, but it's more of like a heathered white and the button band and the borders will be in this gray color. I feel like I have to sneeze. Okay, so <laughs> for the class, I wanted to do the class because there's a ton in this pattern that I've never done before. I also am looking forward to just getting plugged in more with my local knitting community. Hopefully I'll meet some people at the class that I haven't met before, but this cardigan is knit bottom up. That's new for me. It is worked in the round and then steaked 
that is also new to me. And color work, although color work is not new to me, I don't do it a lot. So I'm looking forward to working on some more color work with this pattern. And what's also new to me is Icelandic wool. I've never knit with this. I've heard a lot about it just from Googling some research on what Icelandic wool is. It comes from sheep in Iceland that because of the climate there, they've been sort of, they've evolved or sort of breeded to withstand the very cold temperatures. So the wool is very warm, like extremely warm. It's also known for being water repellent and they sort of advertise this wool as good for outerwear. So I'm hoping that this jacket or this cardigan could sort of fit more as like a jacket because it's gonna be very thick and warm and perfect for winter wear. Additionally, it's also known for being super lightweight but still having all those great warmth properties. So it's not really gonna be heavy. Um, this is a bulky weight yarn. I believe that this specific yarn is two ply. Um, loosely spun and it's supposed to have like a great bloom once it blocks so yeah i was supposed to have the first class today and ended up getting postponed so i don't have any like progress for you but i'm very excited to sort of show you guys the progress on this cardigan as it gets knit up especially the steaking process when we get to that part it's gonna be wild. Steaking, if you are unfamiliar with the process is when you cut into your knitting and it's used a lot when you're making cardigans because it's easier to knit in the round and then cut it at the end. You Before you cut it, you do reinforce it either with a sewing machine or with sort of crochet stitches and then you cut it and they do emphasize that seeking is made only or meant only for wool pieces because natural wool will sort of felt against itself as you cut it and sort of lock in those stitches more in addition to having the sewn reinforcement. So some people think it's scary. I don't think it's gonna be scary. I think it's gonna be really fun. So very excited about that. So here's my lopi. The rest of it's in the back. Can't wait to start knitting up this sweater. So I also received a shipment from Laura of row one and Laura reached out and asked if I would be willing to share about her product on my podcast. And I was like, of course, happy to. So a little bit about row one. This is a monthly sort of subscription box and it's a way to sample yarns from different indie dyers. So every monthly package comes with 10, 10 gram mini skeins of hand dyed yarn from a different indie dyer each month. The dyer and the yarns that come in the package are a surprise every month. So let me show you guys what came in this February shipment. All right, it's a little crinkly in the plastic. Hopefully it's not too loud on the speakers, um, but we have this beautiful assortment of hand dyed yarn. This month's dyer was Charming You, and she is named Maureen. She's located in Texas here in the United States. Let me take these out of the crinkly plastic. All right, I couldn't grab all of them in my hand, but <laughs> these are some of the mini skeins. And, oh, they're really cute. I was looking at all of them and I picked out some favorites. I really like this one. This one is the color Dusk. It's got some purples and sort of pastel blues and pastel pinks. This one is called Wedding Crasher which also has some purples. I am a big purple fan. I actually had this sort of mauve light purple over here as my like wedding bridesmaid dress color. So kind of funny how this yarn name is called Wedding Crasher and I feel like it reminds me of my wedding. <laughs> um, if you are more into like bright colors, there's this really nice bright pink and orange multicolored here. This is called Oktoberfest. Oh, this one's also cute. It's called Sea Breeze. And it's just really nice oceany greens and blues. So with the row one subscription boxes, you get 10, 10 gram mini skeins. Like I mentioned before, the yarns are usually sock yarns. So this is an 80-20 superwash merino nylon. I think this month's yarn, these are two ply. It's gonna depend on the dyer of every month, um, but there are lots of options you can make. So you get a total of 100 grams of fingering weight yarn, usually enough for socks. And Laura also mentioned that she has some pattern inspiration on her Instagram page. So I will link all of those below. Uh, she did mention that there is sort of a entry 
coupon code. So for your first order, you get 20% off with the code HELLO20. So I'll also put that below in the description. That's just for everyone that code is not linked to me at all. It's just, you know, your first time ordering from the company, so you get a little discount. So if you are interested in trying out some indie dyed yarns, don't really know where to start, or maybe you just want to see what's out there, I think this is a great way to sort of dip your toes in it. The box also came with this cute little stitch marker set. It's a little heart. I don't know if you guys can see. It is the February box, so I wonder if the heart is like, cause Valentine's Day, and then a cute little sticker logo and a little Valentine's Day chocolate. So super cute. Thank you, Laura, again, for sending that to me. And I'm super excited to share that with all of you. All right, some other stuff I've been up to knitting related. I decided to go through my yarn shelf and organize it. It was getting kind of messy. It was getting really full too. I'm getting a lot of yarn for future projects. And I feel like in terms of my yarn stash, I'm kind of in a transitional phase where I still have a lot of yarn that I got when I was sort of beginning with my knitting journey in the past few years, a lot of it being like acrylic wool blends and I just prefer natural yarns now. So I went through my yarn stash, I sorted through a bunch of yarns that I know I'm not gonna use anymore. So I am gonna do a little mini de-stash sale. I'm gonna list them on my Etsy shop just because I already have that shop set up so it does make shipping and like processing payment very easy for me. So I'll link that below as well. I am gonna have just so you have an idea of what's there. Some We Are Knitters Petite Wool, The Wool, as well as some Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, as well as Lion Brand Woolies, the regular worsted weight. So if that interests you, I will be listing those. I'll probably keep them up for a week or two and whatever doesn't sell, I'll be donating off to a thrift craft store near me. So it felt really good to go through my yarn and sort of sift out things that you know, it's kind of like decluttering. So that felt nice. And I'm hoping to film a yarn stash tour soon so I can show you guys what I have and my future plans for all the yarns and all of the goodies. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to say is a huge thank you. We surpassed 5,000 subscribers in the past week. And I am just so grateful for all of you guys for joining me in my knitting journey. I do this for fun. It brings me a lot of joy. Um, it's currently not my full-time job, you know, it's just sort of on the side. So again, thank you guys for subscribing and to sort of celebrate, I'm thinking of doing my first knit and chat sort of Q&A. So if you guys have questions for me, sort of like an ask me anything knitting related, maybe some personal questions, um, you can leave them down below in the comments. I would ask you guys to start your questions with hashtag question. I am borrowing this idea from Nitty Natty. It just seems like a very easy way for my comments to stay organized when I sort through them later to plan out the knit and chat. So thank you Nitty Natty for that idea. So again, if you have a question for me, put it down below with hashtag question. I'll also open up a box on my Instagram page um, so yeah, I'll be filming that within the next week or so. So thank you guys for joining me and getting all the updates on my knitting projects. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.